In this lecture, I'm going to show you how we can derive a formula that helps us connect uh, the equilibrium KQ concentration that is tied to uh, molarities, brackets, and how we can find the equivalent value for KEQ with reactions that deal with partial pressures, which is those parentheses. Now, equilibrium constants that are based upon molarities and equilibrium constants that are based upon partial pressures, okay, are essentially equivalent in, in the sense they tell us in the reaction where that point where the products and the reactants when they're stable who is favored and it tells us that most favored position of the forward and reverse reaction based on the second law of thermodynamics however the value of kq and the value of value of kq de dealing with just concentrations or molarities and the value of kq that deals with partial pressures or pressures is a bit different the actual numbers generated so what we're going to do is have a way to convert from what we call KC, that would be an equilibrium um, uh, constant dealing with concentrations, or I'd say molarities. We use brackets to show that inside the brackets we have a molarity, and show how we can connect, or at least bring, build a formula that helps us convert an equilibrium constant in molarities with an equilibrium constant that deals with pressures or partial pressures and we would use parentheses to show that again both types of equilibrium constants one generated from molarities one from partial pressures tell us essentially the same thing thermodynamically but to um, make them equal to each other to convert from one to the other takes a takes an equation so we're going to derive that all right so let's start by thinking about what we need here. All right, now, let's start with what this represents. This is a KP, this is a, uh, a gas law, this is the Haber process, a very famous reaction. And we're gonna say the KP, that's the equilibrium um, constant in a reaction full of gases, is equal to what they always are, pr par products over reactants. Okay, so we've got ammonia, NH3, gas, partial pressure, so I'm using parentheses, coefficients, become exponents, or products over reactants, and another reactant becomes the denominator to the first power. We'll just put that there. Okay, so that's a KP, and that's an equilibrium expression, or law of mass action, as you might have heard it. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and we're going to kind of put pressure by itself because the, these are partial pressures inside. All right, so we're going to put P by itself and pressure is equal to N over V RT. Now I put just the um, V or N over the V for a particular reason, and that reason is that I am dealing here with a molarity. That, my friends, is a molarity. Moles over what? Liter in volume. Okay, so if you remember from other types of derivations we've done, you can clearly see that we're dealing with molarity right here. So let's put this back in for each of the uh, equations here. So go back to our expression we have here, and we have ammonia, and we're going to put for the partial pressure, we're going to put the equivalent, which is going to be molarity, or N over V, okay, RT. And that's to the second power. And let's not forget what that's for. That's for the ammonia, the NH3. And I forgot the power looks like for the second power. And then over on the bottom, we have the H2, which is the N over V, to the RT. And that's to the second power. Uh, well, I guess that'd be the third power. I guess I put the second power, but there's a coefficient here. All right, to the third power, and then of course I put my N2. Well, it is going to represent N2. All right, let's not forget this is H2, and this is going to be represent my what? My N2, and that's to the first power. 
Okay, so hopefully we can see that what we have here is concentrations. Yes, we have essentially concentrations to some power. Okay, I guess I should put this as the N2. Okay, so what we have built in my equation already, remember this is KP, the whole thing, and if you can clearly see that I have a molarity to a what? I have a concentration, a molarity to the second power. I got a concentration for the third power. I got a concentration to the first power. So I can actually split this up and I'm going to do that now. And when I do that, okay, you can clearly see that my KP is going to equal the concentration, which is the molarity of NH3 to its square times RT and we'll put RT squared so mathematically these are equivalent and then we have the concentration of the H2 to its cube here times RT to the 3, and then we have what? We have the concentration of the N2 to the 1, right? There it is, to the 1. It's a molarity in the brackets, times what? The RT to the 1. Now, I can simplify this further, and when I do so, okay, I can see that this, 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 pull that out, and what does that equal? That equals Kc. Kc is equal to the products of reactants coefficients become exponents. Solids of the zone apply when we're dealing with what? Brackets. So this is Kc. This is an equilibrium expression that we normally have when we're dealing with molarities. Exactly the same thing, okay, as we talked about over here. So it's Kc, all right, now times what? Well, times this whole other expression, okay, which is Rt squared over what? RT cubed RT to the first. Okay, let's deal with the last part here. Now it's RT to something, RT, this RT, okay, you can see it's RT squared, in this case, minus the sum of, remember, exponents when you divide or subtracting? So what does this become? Really, this, this whole expression right here becomes RT to some power where we're taking the what? These coefficients, which are basically mole ratios in the formula, and we're doing what? Well, 2 minus the sum of 3 plus 1. I can't write anymore, so let me just change that. So it's 2 minus, let's get that. So that whole expression, let me just write it up here, RT, okay, to some power, and that power is, think about it, 2 minus the sum of 3 plus 1. Okay, what you, we say is we're going to equate that to the change in the moles of the gas. So what we say is KP is equal to the KC, which is, regular old um, equilibrium expression we've been working with in molarity and we times that by the RT to what? Well we're gonna put the change in N here, the change in moles. Now what is that? That change in moles is the change in moles in the equation. Notice in the reaction, in this reaction, we have four moles of a gas here and now we have two moles of a gas. So the change in moles would be 2, and that's where the, that'd be a, to the second power, okay? Or if you want to do it, okay, if you want to do it any other way, so this is uh, 3 plus 1, which is 4. So in the case here, it's 2 minus 4, so this would be a negative 2 change, and this would be to the negative 2 for the RT, and you can see how that'll affect your KC, okay? And again, um, very similar, if there was no change in the mole, then you'd have a zero 
and to the zero power, this, this expression would just be a 1. Okay, so um, nothing happens in kp equals kc. So any case, it just shows you how they're, they're, you're tied together. Remember, the reason why it's different, if you look back here, is that pressure, okay, is equal to a molarity times this universal gas constant and temperature. Okay, so pressure is always going to be a little bit bigger than the molarity. That's what makes the Kc and Kp a little different from each other. Obviously, if there is no change in the pressure in the system or moles of gas from one to the other, then you will have the same, Kc will approximate and equal Kp for the, the case I just suggested if you get a change of moles that are zero. And the change of moles, of course, is going to be um, products minus reactants as written here. So a nice easy uh, formula to use to convert an equilibrium expression for Kc okay, um, and, K and Kp. Again, both equilibrium constants. One is for molarity in brackets. The other one is for partial pressures that are in parentheses in a gas. And of course, the little expression here um, is a change in mole reactants minus the products, total moles, and of course, temperature in Kelvin. And of course, this is the universal gas constant, and this is going to be in liter, liter atmospheres, mole Kelvins. Okay.